So when we uh, take a scale factor to a figure that we're figuring volume or uh, even area or perimeter, we're going to look at how that affects any of those things. So if we have a scale factor, if we double the size of an original figure, how does that affect the perimeter? How does that affect the area? How does that affect the volume? So we're going to start by looking at the circle here. The circumference and area. So that's like perimeter and area of the circle. Here the radius is starts out as a 4, which means the circumference, formula for circumference is 2 pi i. Radius is 4. So we're going to multiply that out. We're going to use 3.14. And we get 25.12. For area, area of a circle is pi r squared. So let's do that. Radius is 4, so 4 squared. It is 16 times 3.14 is 50.24. Then multiply the radius by 3. So now instead of the radius being 4, it's 4 times 3, so the radius is now 12. And we're going to find the circumference again. 2 pi R we get seventy five point three six. We want from twenty five to seventy five. The area pi R squared, so twelve squared. Four hundred fifty two point one six. So the radius increased by a factor of three, scale factor of three. The circumference went from twenty five point one two to seventy five point three six, which also increased that's a um, scale factor of three also. So the radius increased by a scale factor of 3, so the circumference increased by a scale factor of 3. The area, however, went from 50 to 450, essentially, which is a scale factor of 9. And in fact, 50.24 times 9 is 452.16. So this was the original circumference times 3. This was the original area times 9. Our scale factor for the radius was 3. Scale factor was 3, circumference went by 3, area went up by 9, which is 3 squared. So if the dimensions get multiplied by a number A, the perimeter or circumference is multiplied by A. And the area is multiplied by A squared, whatever that scale factor was squared. So here we've got a, looks like a square. So we can find the perimeter and area.
So this is got a right angle here. So this side six, this side six. This means we can find the hypotenuse of this little triangle. I do have the Pythagorean theorem. You end up getting six times the square root of two. Now this is a square, so that means all the sides are six square root of two. So the perimeter is twenty four square root of two. The area we just do base times height, so six squared to two times six squared to two. Seventy-two. So then it says now we're going to multiply the length by one third. So six times one third makes that be two, and that be two. This means now you do Pythagorean theorem again, you get the hypotenuse, which is just 2 squared of 2. So the perimeter is 2, 4, 6, 8 square root of 2. And the area is 8. Two square root of two times two square root of two is eight. So to get from twenty-four square root of two to eight square root of two, that's a scale factor of one third. You do the transformed over the original. Eight over twenty-four is one over three. For the area, you do the transformed over the original. So eight over seventy-two. which reduces to 1 over 9, which fits with what we wrote on the previous slide because we said the perimeter would be multiplied by A and the area would be multiplied by A squared. We did 1 third, so the perimeter was 1 third, the area was 1 third times 1 third, which is 1 ninth. So you can apply that same concept to volume as well. So here we have a, a storage tank, which is a cylinder with hemispherical caps. Find the volume and surface area of the original tank, then multiply all the dimensions by two and find the new volume and surface area. So they give us a formula here that we can use for volume and surface area. Pi r squared times h plus 4 thirds pi r squared. So the radius, we're told the diameter is 6, so the radius is 3. And the height is 12. That's listed right there. So for the volume, we have pi times radius squared, so 3 squared, times the height is 12. Plus... 4 thirds pi r cubed, 4 thirds times pi times the radius, 3 cubed. So we'll multiply that out. 3 squared is 9 times 12 times 3.14. And 3 to the third is 27 times 3.14 times 4 divided by 3.
add those together and we get a volume of 452.16. We're actually not going to look at surface area. <laughs> so we're just going to do the volume. So we'll find the volume of the transformed solid, which says use a multiply all the dimensions by two. So the 12 becomes a 24, and the 6 becomes a 12, which means that the radius is now 6, half of 12. So we have the formula for volume right there, so we're plugging in 6 for the radius, 24 for the height, And then six for the radius. So we multiply that out, we get 2712.96 plus. Nine hundred four point three two add that together and we get a total volume thirty six one seven point two eight. So our Dimensions changed by a scale factor of 2. The volume, though, to get from 452.16 to 3,617.28. That's times 8, 452.16 times 8 is exactly the 36, 17.28. So the sides all increase by a factor of 2, but the volume increased by a factor of 8. Skip ahead one little slide here. That's because the vol if the dimensions are multiplied by 8, we're not going to worry about surface area. But if the dimensions are multiplied by A, the volume is going to be multiplied by A cubed. This is three dimensions. So it happens three times, which is why it's the same power. Just like area's got two dimensions, so it happens twice, so it's squared. So let's go back and look at this cone on top of a hemisphere. Again, we're not going to do surface area, we're just going to do volume. So we multiply all the dimensions by two thirds. So applying what we were just saying, the volume should have a scale factor then. the third power. So we'll check that out when we're done. <clears throat> so the original solid right here, one-third pi r squared times h. So we need the radius, which they give us right here. The radius is 3. And the height is 4. plus two-thirds pi r cubed, and the radius we said was three, so we get the volume of 
of the plus the volume of the hemisphere. It's 56.52. Add that together, and we get a total volume of 94.2 inches cubed. So we're going to do the uh, scale factor of two-thirds now to get our new dimensions. So four times two-thirds means the height is 2.67. The radius times two thirds is just two. And we'll use all of that to get our volume after the transformation. So it's one third pi r squared, so two squared times the height. Plus two thirds pi r cubed, so two cubed. So for the cone part, we get a volume of eleven point one seven eight four. And for the hemisphere, 16.747. Add those two together and you get about 27.925. So it's a little bit difficult to figure out just by looking at those two numbers what you have to multiply by. But we said according to our little formula, it should be the scale factor cubed. So 2 cubed, that will be 8. 3 cubed, that would be 27. So take the original volume, 94.2, times 8 over 27, we should get 27.925. 94.2 times what we say our volume scale factor is going to be, 8 over 27. And you get 27.91. It's just off by our rounding that we used in the problem. So again, if the dimensions change by A, the volume changes by A cubed. So, Farmer made a scale model of this silo. So, that here's the model. A real silo is bigger than eight inches. So, find the volume of the model here. So we need the radius, which is going to be 4. The height of the cylinder here is 3. So let's find the area of the cylinder, or the volume of the cylinder. Pi r squared times the height. Radius is 4. Times the height is 3.
So that's about 150.72 cubic inches. And then we have the cone, which is pi r squared times h divided by 3. The radius is still 4. The height is 3. And we're dividing by 3. We're multiplying by 1 third. 1 third pi r squared times h. So we get 50.24. So the total volume of the model is 200.96. Now, if the scale ratio is 1 to 36, that means our volume ratio is going to be 1 cubed to 36 cubed. which is 1, 2, 46,656. So what that's saying is the real silo is 36 times larger than this, which means the volume of the real silo is going to be 46,656 times So 46,656 times the volume we found should tell us the volume of the real silo. This is a gigantic, large number. cubic inches. It's over 9 million cubic inches, which really just means that's not a proper unit to be using. They would be using like yards or something. In fact, it would be like 200.96 cubic yards. Something like that. It would be closer to that. You could use cubic feet, whatever, whatever unit you decided to if you wanted to. But it said be consistent with units of measurement, so we're going to be consistent and stick with inches cubed.